my parents. And one time, be this quiet. guy had guts like that one time in Crow, Arizona. What? Huh? Crow, lighten what? up. It's, it could be my parents. Oh, sorry, dude. Machine. Didn't mean to keep going. Cut it out up there. The satellite of love is not a party machine. I don't know what you folks are doing up there, but if I were you, I'd take the pizza off the ceiling. <laughs> Well, Nia Peebles, our invention exchange this week is a new consumer product. Frank? Hi. My name is TV's Frank, and I am a Stoogeaholic. Hi, TV's Frank. You know, ever since I was a little kid, I was always a big Three Stooges fan, in all their various incarnations, except for Curly Joe Doridi. You know, he lacks subtlety. But, you know, I could never emulate their exquisite fight choreography. Until now, that is. That's right. That's why we've invented these, the Three Stooges gun. They come in both offensive and defensive. Hey, spinach chin! No, mo, yuck, 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 whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, how I loathe you. Sightingly, whoop, whoop. Joel, 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 Joel! <coughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, sirs. Oh, well, my invention this week is kind of based on uh, something I invented during the party. You know how I took Tom uh, Servo and turn him into a root beer pony keg here. I thought I could do the same kind of thing with Crow, the robot. I've actually... Crow, would you come over here, please? I'm not coming out. Crow, come on. Oh, Shut up. Really exciting. I'm delicious. What a oh, delicious I feel so ridiculous. I figured I could take Crow, TV's Crow, the lovable, wise-cracking robot, and turn him into a delicious shish kebab. You know, robots, after all, are made out of metal. They can withstand great heat. Earlier today, I baked a duplicate Crow, at 500 degrees. Oh, you look great. What is that do you thing? Oh, it just looks so delicious. And oh. he'll end up looking just like this. Oh, when he's done. boy, if food could talk, I wonder what this delicious dish would say. Bite me! What do you think, sirs? Well, Aunt Jemima, this time you've really stepped off the deep end. Frank? Now, do you shred the Swiss cheese or just slice it really thin? Frank, this time I'm really going to hurt you. I understand. Why don't you go and get this week's invention exchange, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You've been very kind to me. Frank, you have no clue. Well, Aunt Jemima, our invention exchange this week has to do with meat. Frank? Well, you know, recently I've become a vegetarian, and it work it's worked out great, really. Uh, you know, the other day my colon looked up at me and said, Frank, thank you. I said, no, thank you. But now what am I going to do with all the meat I have stored in freezers? I figured, hey, why not bring the meat back to life? That's right. That's why we've invented the meat reanimator. Hook it up, Frank. Clear. It's alive! Alive! My corn-fed Minnesota chicken is alive! You know, I thought this was a good idea, but this is one weird mamma jamma. What do you think, Garrett Utley? Chicken waffles? Oh, you're weird. Which results in creativity. Which mm -hmm. results in my latest invention exchange. It's a very literal interpretation of the old waffle iron. Mm -hmm. Let's say you love traditional waffles, mm -hmm. but you like the classic simplistic styling of the old pancake. Mm -hmm. No problem. Just douse it with a little Mrs. Butterworth spray <laughs> starch, like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cover it with a cloth to avoid burns mm -hmm. and iron. Hey. And... Gee, it turns an ordinary waffle into a flat waffle. And clean up some breeze. What do you think, sirs? Ancient Chinese secret, huh? Hmm? Dear God, what have I done? What the heck is going on up there? Uh, hey, Frank, will these work on waffles? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, Joel, today's experiment is a little piece of slime from Roger Corman called Viking Women in the Sea Serpent. But first... A little lesson in home economics. Here's a waffle for you, Scarecrow. Yeah, let's face it, sticky fingers. Waffles are nothing more than a vehicle for butter and syrup. <laughs> what? They to are no... Hey, you watch your mouth around waffles. <laughs> ah, I got you. <laughs> now, Frank, I want you to set this up so they get a high-voltage shock every time someone says waffle. <laughs> what? Has someone been saying waffles a lot? <laughs> Hello, Button. Let's slam straight away into this week's invention exchange. Big noses. Uh, that's right, uh, the super schnoz. El grande posotros. What? Big noses. Uh, right, right. Uh, Durante, eat your heart out. Big honkers. Coming at ya. In 3D. Do I smell pie in the oven? Uh, not in this building. Say, doctor, sports scent tonight? Well, what's the point of the big noses anyway? Well, they're just 
really big, you know? Just think of the stuff you could do with them. Very useful. Now I can brown nose myself. Wow, you and I are kind of on the same wavelength. I thought of my invention exchange as being this big head. Who's that guy with the big head? Hey, Joe, can you help me with my algebra? Sure, no problem. It's a snap with my new big head. Well, say, Joel, do people make fun of you now that you have a big head? Oh, sure, people are naturally curious. But then I explain to them that I've got a really big head. Uh, Joel, are you in any pain? No, just a really big head. Well, I guess we can say that you got a big head there, huh? Yeah, you can. Big is all outdoors. It's real big, sirs. What do you think? I knew a man in Chicago once that had a big head. Uh, No, it was nowhere near that big. Uh, Doctor, I don't mean to stick my nose into your business. (laughs) (laughs) But shouldn't we really be getting to the movie? (laughs) Uh, Right you are, my long-nosed companion. Well, anyway, our invention exchange this week is for family members who won't come in for breakfast. You bring breakfast to them with the breakfast bazooka. Oh, Frank, come in for breakfast. I'm playing. You died, Joe. This delicious meal has a flat trajectory and a muzzle velocity of 2,400 feet per second. It's all part of this nutritious war. What do you think? What a coinky dink. Our invention is based on a similar concept. That's right. It's for the hurried youth of today. So busy, they sometimes forget to stuff their faces with toxic, chemically laced, mm. life shortening sugar snacks. Yeah, it's called the between meal mortar. Check it out. Clear. Oh! 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 They say you never hear the snack with your name on it. What do you think, sirs? Well, Julia Childish, your experiment this week is an unwanted, uncalled for, unnecessary sequel to The Amazing Colossal Man, War of the Colossal Beast. But first, a little musical nightmare from the heart of whiteness. Bon Appa die. Oh, Cripes, these buffets on my body are so reasonable. Mm, you know, you know oh, Marge and I came here one gotta, time, we brought them in, and oh, you know, Cripes, I didn't get you gotta try some of their rice mm, krispies mm, down the by the belly button. Oh, Frank, uh, it's time to reveal this week's invention exchange. <laughs> oh, accept the pain, Frank. <laughs> You've heard the expression, that's a hard pill to swallow. Well, our invention exchange this week is just that, some hard pills to swallow. You see this pill right here? That should be easy to swallow, shouldn't it, Frank? Yes, it should be easy, except for the three-pronged fish hook attached to it. Uh, This pill, I'm not going to kid you, this is very difficult to swallow. It's a not-so-tiny time pill, complete with a living gerbil. Terry, Oh, Terry, yes. If you can keep it down, you have a pet that knows you inside and out. Uh, Turn, Frank, and cough. If you have trouble keeping one pill down, try our pill. Pill necklace of picric acid, 105 capsules on a string. Keep your gag reflex active till the cows come home. The longer it takes to swallow, the harder it gets. Yes, and the children, the children love vitamin shapes, like shaped like cartoons, whimsical shapes, whimsical shapes. And wouldn't it be hard on all those Flintstone kids if their favorite cartoon vitamin came? Turn Frank. Life size. Hmm? Hmm? Balls in your court, Joel. <laughs> well, that is dark, sirs. Well, anyway, we've gotten together and come up with this celebrity home appliances like this. The Emilio Esta Pez. <laughs> Just lift his head, and out comes real Pez. Hey, mm. tastes like real chalk. Like mm. I said, real Pez. <laughs> hey, check it out. Here's Tom Servo modeling the Jimmy J.J. Walker. Keeps me walking, standing upright, turns an ordinary stroll a dynamite! Hey, go on the Sullivan Show and get canned with this, your own Jackie Mason jar. Who's lifting my top? A Gentile would do it differently. He's lifting my top, it would be the thrill of his life. A Jewish man could lift the top and say, oy vey, I'm a Jewish, I'm canning tomatoes, I don't understand it, I got a Mason jar. And Uh finally, massage your friend with this. The Charlie Callis Massager. Ah. What do you think, sirs? 
I think you die, Joe. <laughs> well, your experiment this week is going to be hard to keep down. It's called The Unearthly, and it stars John Carradine and Tora Johnson, plus two stinky shorts. Frank, shut up! Enjoy! Frank, it's time to reveal this week's invention exchange. And boy, is it ever gonna sting. Mm. Sting is right. The holiday season is here, the boss is on vacation, and we've gone crazy! Now I know from experience that nothing chafes a kid's hinder more than his request for a neat toy maligned into a safe and practical gift. Enter the Wish Squisher. Yeah, what you do is you take a really cool toy that any kid would dig, like these uh, video cassette cartridge games. You take it, stick it through the Wish Squisher, and it comes Voila. out as annoying and practical as any gift from Aunt Vida. Check it out. Underoos that won't fit for two years. And what kid wouldn't love is a gift? More money than he or she will ever deserve. But then, suddenly, it starts to get weird. The rules change. You start to feel kind of bad. Yes. Voila. What was once the bright promise for the future becomes your four-year-old sister's raisin collection. And nothing, and I mean nothing, is more fun than racing slot cars, just like this one around the Christmas tree. But no! Nah! Uh, <laughs> what was once your first draft grade A choice from your parents as a gift becomes... Socks. Socks, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, what was once crummy, speedball, black and green, rayon encrusted, uncomfortable socks becomes... Run it through again, Frank. Okay, running it through. Wish squisher. Yep, it becomes a gift certificate for a stationery store. Joel? You know, Joel, I was wondering, do you think if they sent that really crummy gift through the machine again, it might turn into something neat? Hush, boy. You'll anger the overlords. Hello, sirs. Our invention exchange this week is based on our Yuletide musings about what would be on the island of misfit toys based on Rankin Bass's production of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Who Check ever it. heard of a Charlie in the box? Exactly. Check it out. Here's a new contribution. Uh, buttery sweet poster dolls. Ooh. Yeah. Or play Patrick Swayze's Roadhouse board game. Become a highly paid Tai Chi wielding, philosophically alert bouncer like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. Shake the dice. Get in a potentially dangerous situation and use the catchphrase cards to lash out at your opponents with sayings like, It's my way or the highway. Hurts, don't it? And you're my new Saturday night thing. Yeah. Or you can have absolutely no fun whatsoever with this easy bake foundry. The light bulb powered blast furnace turns inexpensive big iron you find around the house into high grade steel that's ready for market. Okay, and uh, what do you have for us, Gypsy? <coughs> what? Oh, come on, open come your on. mouth. Come on. <coughs> oh, 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 my oh, God. Oh, yeah, it got hairball. Oh, 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 no, it's not. It's Gypsy's contribution to the new island of misfit toys, Mr. Mesh Potato Head. Oh, puke. Ugh. What do you think, sirs? Come in, Joel, my little space guy, my little uh, man who's trapped up there, my little person who we control in a funny kind of way. Why don't you hit the sack, Frank? I'll take over from here, okay? Thanks, Dad. Well, Joel, we're gonna swing right into this week's invention exchange. Frank? You know, when you've been hospitalized as frequently as I have, the same old hospital food gets to be a real drag, particularly the flavorless swill that they pump intravenously into your arms as you drift in and out of consciousness. That's why I've invented these new tasty boil-in-the-bag intravenous dinners. Who says a coma can't be delicious? That's right, no more glycopyrrolate administered drably at 0.8 milligrams per liter of Ringer's lactate. This is hearty Irish stew with cubed lamb. Mm. And this is a delightful uh, Poulon Vin Rouge that we have here. Mm. Is that tine I'm tasting? 60 parts per million, Frank. Uh, here's a uh, cauliflower, and uh, would you like to see our dessert cart? <laughs> Should I? Well, we have uh, Palomira figs in a port sauce that's very tasty, or an uh, almond cake with apricot coulis. It's really decadent. <laughs> okay, you talked me into it, but please, small portions. <laughs> what do you think, Joel? 
I don't. Whoa, good one. <laughs> Whoa, good one. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thanks. Um, our invention exchange this week, sirs, are based on the old classic pop-up books we had when we were kids. But now that I've grown up, uh, my tastes have changed, and I like a more sophisticated fare. So we all got together and came up with some pop-up books for some adult titles, like uh, Charles Dickens' uh, Great Expectations. Ooh, oh, look at that. that. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. 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 Cake with That's rats lovely. on it. Oh, uh, there's the pop-up version of Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, this okay. is one of my favorites. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See? That's the end of the book. And for that touch of despair, there's always Albert Camus' classic, The Plague. Ah, yeah. Ooh, that's how that goes. And, and I made a special one, a pop-up version of William Burroughs' Naked Lunch. Oh, no, no, I, no, 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 no. I don't think we uh, okay. should. That wouldn't be right. No. Sirs. <laughs> Joel, I was just fluffing Frank's pillow. Uh, well, your your movie today is is really bad. Uh, it's called Master Ninja uh, One, I think. Enjoy. Push the button, Frank. I had Jello today. Oh right, I'll get it. Oh oh oh! Very nice, Joel. Uh, downright funky. <laughs> Isn't that right, Doctor? I had Jello today. <laughs> I'll push the button. Ah. Uh, um. I'll be right back. Uh -huh. <sighs> yeah. Well, should we show them ours? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. good plan. Yeah. Um. Uh, hey, sirs, uh, we have our own invention this time. Uh, Cambot, uh, move it in here. Right here in my invention. hand, Cambot. See you see it? See? You see, it's a new long-distance telephone transducer that operates at 7 ohms in a nominal temperature range of 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's a mark, uh, marked improvement over the old configuration that often required over 25 seconds to connect transcontinental signals and uh, does so at half the cost. And it's completely solid state. Mm -hmm. You see, the chip sees a telephone signal as a series of ones and zeros. Hey which guys, are the I found it. Here's the Red shit exchange. It's called the big head. Uh, Joel, we uh, we did the big head already. Really? Yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, well, let's uh, press on, Dingleberry. Our hey, who's that guy with the big head? Cork it, Larry. Our experiment this week is in honor of your horribly stinky film. Now, we all remember and love the antics of comedian Joe Besser on the old Abbott and Costello show. Well, we can relive those moments with my new stinky bomb. Yes, now you can turn any friend into that lovable buffoon who was a lisping man-child long before it became fashionable. I think it would go something like this. Oh, Elegant, isn't it? Oh, yes. I'll harm you. Well, Joel, it's time for me to send you your own stink bomb. Yeah, oh, this film well, makes the unearthly look like oh, Citizen Kane. I'll give you such a pinch. Oh, it's called the Castle of Fu Manchu. <laughs> Take a tall oh. drink of gray water, Joel. It'll help you get in the mood. Send him the film. Oh, what a final one. What a final one. Ow. Oh. oh, I'll harm you. Well, Joel, I'm going to come right out and say it. I really like buffet dining, although it can be a dream come true. Sometimes it's quite tiring. That's why we've invented the new conveyor belt buffet. Swiss steak, Frank? Oui, oui, monsieur. How about some southern baked ham? I've always depended on the kindness of caterers. Juice? Mmm. -hmm. What about mashed potatoes? Mashed enchantment. And for those of you who like just truly fast food, some, you've never seen food some, this fast no, I'll just, before. I'll just have some, uh, and then I'll take a little, and then I'll, with the, and, ah! Well, Joel, not only have we invented the world's fastest buffet, we've invented a Lucy sketch. Back to you, Desi Lou. Yes, your grouchiness is, sir. This week we've got a green experiment that's based on those new age pioneer friends over in Biosphere 2. And it uses a power source that's available in just about any home in the USA, and that is the gerbil. Or a smallish hamster, either one. Right, exactly. And uh, what this is is a totally self-contained, self-perpetuating biosphere environment for the gerbil of the not-so-distant future. I like to call the gerbil sphere, too. 
Okay, you want to take it part way there, Tom? Sure thing, Joel. Now, the central element in our holistic environment is the common running wheel. As our furry pioneering friend turns the wheel, the log here is propelled through the wood lathe, resulting in, of course, the wood chips down below that you see, right. which encourages the gerbil or hamster to... Uh, poop. Right, yes. and, and that fertilizes the... The uh, field of alfalfa, right. which we see here, the sprouts growing at just the proper rate to keep the dribble nourished, but not obese. Dr. Crow? Uh, yes. Uh, now, every three years, we will rotate in some soybeans. Uh, we didn't do that originally and accidentally destroyed all the topsoil. Oops. <laughs> and, uh, of course, another minor problem with our perfect system is that the CO2 released by the alfalfa can at times combine with certain undesignated elements causing an <laughs> uncontrolled thunderstorm in the upper reaches of the perfect but, system. But we have installed the air cleaner up here uh, that we believe will rectify the CO2 condition, uh, which we must remind you is only sporadic and which we do not believe interferes in any significant way with the wholeness or perfection of our system no, here. No. You know what? There's so much uh, torque involved with this uh, this little running wheel, I, uh -oh. I I have a feeling we're going to need a gerbil that's at least 20 pounds. So to uh, 23. Yeah, our people are working on it. Uh, yeah. We have a I think it may be a motor. <laughs> Seems like kind of a gym.